some uh, difficulties to resolve. Uh, so what we will do today is uh, just to go through the physical and chemical aspects of uh, hydrogen combustion and how we can, after uh, understanding these uh, aspects or uh, properties, we can make a hydrogen engine work and what we should take care of while developing a hydrogen engine. In fact, uh, hydrogen is supposed to be a clean fuel for many reasons. Uh, hydrogen is the uh, most uh, is the uh, element uh, abundantly available in the universe, and after combustion, it ends up as plain water. So. Uh, it is supposed to be a green engine. Uh, there are two ways we can exploit hydrogen uh, to generate uh, uh, power of high grade, either mechanical energy or electrical energy, which are high grade energies as per thermodynamics. One is through the fuel cell, another is through the IC engines uh, design. Today we will concentrate on the latter, that is uh, IC engine design. Um, we can design very highly efficient hydrogen engines, uh, and which can compete with the fuel cell method uh, in terms of uh, efficiency, and it it is more simple or uh, simpler than a fuel cell vehicle okay so with this brief introduction i will go ahead with uh, hydrogen uh, engine which uses internal combustion engine principle so today we will talk about uh, the basics flame velocity flame temperature quench distance ignition temperature compression ratio and physical properties like diffusivity and density and then also talk about the efficiency a bit. Then we will see the engine's uh, design challenges. What, are, what is the ignition system based on the basics that we are uh, discussing first. And then there are two types of uh, combustion. One is main chamber combustion. Uh, can be rich or lean burn and what we will do with a rich burn uh, engine that we will see and then there is a lean burn pre-chamber combustion which is very uh, interesting uh, in fact a pre-chamber combustion engine is uh, uh, also uh, being developed uh, uh, for gasoline combustion mainly for efficiency we will see that and then how this uh, lean burn pre-chamber engine uh, our combustion principle can be applied for hydrogen engine uh, for heavy duty application and then we will see some of these aspects uh, design challenges ignition system as well as uh, one of the one of the important points namely the crankcase ventilation at the end i have given the references uh, interested uh, persons can go through them in detail so we have hydrocarbon combustion which is very common uh, from for thousands of years we have been burning either hydrocarbon or carbon and the equation is like this um, we burn in oxygen in the atmosphere uh, hydrocarbon we we are supposed to get carbon dioxide and had water vapor if complete combustion takes place but we get this troublesome carbon monoxide as well as some of the unburnt hydrocarbons which are broken down parts of the original hydrocarbon nitrogen does not remain as inert gas 
it interacts with the oxygen at high temperature that are encountered in the flame front and we end up with nitric oxide. So we have to treat nitric oxides, carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon in the exhaust so that <coughs> the engine becomes friendly to the environment. In case of hydrogen, as we have in, said in the introduction, we get plain water as the products of uh, combustion, both in the fuel cell design as well as the internal combustion engine design. But in case of internal combustion engines, we get this uh, nitric oxide as well, basically because hydrogen flames are burning at very, very high temperature. So we have loads of uh, nitric oxide that we must handle. So the combustion of hydrogen uh, starts with the trouble of high nitric oxide higher than what we have in case of hydrocarbon combustion as we are going to see in the next few slides. However, we have the advantage, uh, we don't have any carbon dioxide, which is uh, having a high global warming potential and uh, we don't have methane uh, in the exhaust that which also contributes to global warming however as we have said we have to treat uh, nitric oxide so we will see we will understand the chemistry of uh, uh, flame hydrogen flame flame velocity flame temperature at nyx in the beginning then we will see flammability limits Ignition energy required for hydrogen ignition temperature. There are two types of flames. One is laminar and turbulent. Laminar flame is very slow. And turbulent flame is very fast. So turbulent flame velocity is uh, crudely defined as the flame area ratio of turbulent to laminar flames multiplied by the basic laminar flame speed. So the basic laminar flame speed is the chemical property of the fuel, uh, whereas uh, the, the, uh, the turbulence causes increase in the area and apparently we have higher flame velocity. And uh, a, a laminar and uh, turbulent flame apparently look like this with a lot of disturbance to the flame front uh, in case of turbulent flame and a laminar flame is very quiet with the flame front which is very clean and smooth if you look at it under a microscope over a very short time or we take a snap of this turbulent flame the flame front is wrinkled and in case of uh, laminar flame it is not wrinkled as we have seen on the left so essentially the area of the turbulent flame is more or very much higher than the flame front area of a laminar flame. So as the flame propagates to eat into the unburnt mixture, uh, the rate of consumption is given by the area of the flame front multiplied by the laminar flame speed. Whereas here in the turbulent case, we have a lot of area. So a lot of area multiplied by laminar flame speed is apparently the turbulent flame speed, which is very, very high. And it's very difficult to maintain a flame laminar and a flame usually ends up as turbulent, but it, it doesn't mean that uh, we have a very good handle on the flame front, uh, which is turbulent. There is a lot of effects uh, that we must appreciate before we employ turbulent flame front. If you see the gasoline, uh, the laminar flame front uh, uh, propagates very slowly. But it is also if the flame velocity or flame speed is also a function of the equivalence ratio, which is uh, defined as the air fuel uh, fuel air ratio, actual fuel air ratio, 
uh, element mixture increases, the flame velocity decreases. It finds it more difficult to propagate when the pressure is high. And this we must remember while <coughs> designing the engine, we have we are compressing the air, so the flame velocity will be lower. But all these can, flame, laminar flame speeds can be theoretically uh, appreciated uh, without much of a problem. And when the flame speed is very high, also we have very high flame temperature. And flame temperature causes higher nitric oxide, as we see on the right. The flame temperature is highest somewhere around uh, equivalence ratio 1.05. And uh, we have here uh, the nitric oxide very high around 0 0.9. So similarly for natural gas, the laminar flame speed uh, is uh, behaving like gasoline. And the flame speed is similar to that we find in uh, gasoline around 45 centimeters per second. And again, nitric oxide is high somewhere around equivalence ratio 0 0.9. And, uh, and also the flame temperature is high around 1 or 0 0.9. Uh, I made a small mistake. Equivalence ratio less than 1 is rich and equivalence ratio greater than 1 is uh, lean mixture. Okay. So in case of hydrogen, however, you will see the laminar flame speed is high, somewhere around an equivalence ratio of 1.7. And the nitric oxide is high at equivalence ratio of around 0.9. And the flame temperature is very high, around 2,800. We have been seeing a lower flame temperature in case of gasoline and also natural gas by around 200 to 300 degrees centigrade. So this causes far higher nitric oxide. You can see we are having around 7,000 ppm, whereas we have been seeing at of the order of 2,000 ppm at, at, uh, uh, at the maximum in case of natural gas and in case of uh, uh, gasoline, for example. So we have far higher nitric oxide in case of hydrogen, basically because we have very high flame temperature. But what we can see here <coughs> is uh, a great advantage uh, in case of flammability limit of hydrogen. What is flammability limit? The lowest uh, uh, air fuel ratio are the highest air fuel ratio. These are this is the range in which if you strike a spark in the unburned fuel air mixture, it can catch fire. That means if the fuel air mixture is richer than uh, <coughs> this. Uh, richer than this level, okay, then the fuel mixture is too rich and it cannot burn. And if the fuel air mixture is so lean below this uh, limit, it cannot catch fire. The, the, you can remember uh, we are always advised to keep the kitchen well ventilated. That is because any of the flammable gas that is leaking into the kitchen should be leaned out sufficiently so that any spark that is created inadvertently by two metal parts or two steel parts striking. Okay, so that is <coughs> to keep the fuel air mixture below the uh, uh, are, are too too lean. Okay, and too rich also we cannot combust the uh, mixture. In case of diesel, we have a very narrow range for flammable limits. That is why diesel 
is supposed to be a safer fuel than gasoline. Gasoline can burn between 1 and 7.6 percent. And uh, methane, which is, uh, which is the main content of uh, natural gas, has a wider flammable limit. So we are more careful with methane. In case of hydrogen, the flammability limits are very wide, 4 to 75 percent. That means even if it is very, very lean or very rich, we have a problem with the hydrogen. It can catch fire immediately. So we should keep hydrogen atmosphere as leaned out as possible from safety consideration. At the same time, <coughs> we can say that hydrogen is easier to ignite even when it is very lean. And we will exploit this uh, in, the, in our engine design. What happens in uh, gasoline, I mean, throttled uh, engines is when the uh, fuel engine runs lean, the fuel consumption is low. There are two reasons. One is we are uh, throt not throttling very much to, if you can run the uh, engine lean. Secondly, the specific heat ratio is better when the fuel air mixture is lean. So we have two advantages. So the attempt is to run it lean and we, are, and we can burn it very easily. So we will exploit this in the engine design. <coughs> Another advantage with the lean combustion as we have seen in the graph before, nitric oxide is very, very much reduced. But one problem is we are uh, not able to burn as much fuel as possible for a given swept volume because we want to run it lean. That means we want to burn very less hydrogen fuel in a very large amount of air. So hydrogen contains energy. If you burn less hydrogen, you produce less power. So what is the uh, next uh, thing we must remember while designing an engine, it is we have to work out the ignition energy. There are two things. One is uh, we should have an oxidizer and we should have the an ignition source. Okay. But we have problem with hydrogen. Um, it can, it, it doesn't need a lot of energy. So very small energy is enough to start uh, hydrogen uh, combustion, OK? Unlike in case of gasoline, we are in case of natural gas, we need still higher energy, OK? So natural gas is far safer than hydrogen because it doesn't, uh, natural gas does not need a lot of, I mean, needs a lot of energy. So we can, <coughs> we have to create a special spark. And in case of hydrogen, it is a bit easy to uh, ignite with smaller amount of energy. On the other hand, the ignition temperature of hydrogen is very high. So we have to have a spark at around 1085 degrees Fahrenheit, for example, but for a very small tank, OK? In case of gasoline, we can ignite it uh, at lower temperature. So the spark need not be, uh, spark need not produce very high temperature. So we now understand the requirement for a diesel, uh, sorry, hydrogen engine. We need a very high temperature spark for a very, very small time. OK, so the ignition temperature of hydrogen in uh, expressed in Celsius is around 500. And incidentally, compared to gasoline, the hydrogen has got an oct octane number, which is very, very high, 120. That means it has got excellent anti-knock property. And we can use this 
in designing the hydrogen engine with a very high compression ratio. CT ignite uh, even when it is very lean and it is at the same time a bit dangerous uh, if there is a hot spot inside the engine that can cause uh, a fire unintended or fire at unintended time. We can use a glow plug or hardware if you wanted. And uh, essentially, because of this hotspot problem, it is a bit hard to control ignition timing precisely. So we, we must design the engine in such a way that we avoid hotspots uh, anywhere inside the engine uh, from inlet to exhaust. We already said we can go for a very high compression ratio because of its antenna uh, uh, behavior property. So the, with increased uh, compression ratio, we have very good efficiency. So higher compression ratio and the higher specific heat ratio uh, improve the uh, efficiency of a uh, hydrogen engine. And a lean hydrogen mixture is less susceptible to knock than conventional gasoline, therefore can tolerate higher compression ratio. So in other words, we want to design an engine uh, which uh, runs lean uh, or uh, with a lean mixture with a very high compression ratio and less throttling. Essentially, we can have compression a, a hydrogen engine with a very high efficiency. Compare this with uh, gasoline and diesel. Gasoline can, conventional gasoline engines can be uh, efficient from 35 to 42 percent. A diesel engine can be between 42 to 45 percent, and a hydrogen can be 45 to 50 percent. And uh, this is for an engine which is about one to four liter, for example, total swept volume. Uh, this is for just uh, information. Uh, and we can just see the physics of combustion and a bit of uh, chemistry. Uh, uh, you have seen the Davis lamp in our school science, uh, the miners used to find the flame was uh, uh, the flame of the lamp which they were holding in their hands was able to <coughs> ignite the hydrocarbon ga gases in the mines and there were frequent explosions in coal mines for example. So Sir Devi designed a wire gauze or a, or, a, or a shroud with a lot of perforation which <coughs> made the flame uh, or which made the flame uh, unable or, uh, or to propagate to the uh, air fuel mixture that was uh, waiting to burn in the mines. That means if the holes were sufficiently small, the flame cannot pass through the uh, pass through them. <laughs> that means the heat loss uh, to the holes uh, and to the metallic surface was faster than the heat produced by the flame locally. So the flame was unable to travel. So this size uh, the the largest size of the hole is known as the quenching distance this shows a cfd calculation if the gap is sufficiently small the flame is unable to travel through the gap so this is known as quenching distance though we don't have to know about it and I mean know about these calculations now we can 
we can invoke one famous relationship that means the minimum spark ignition energy required to combust a fuel air mixture seems to be closely related to the minimum quenching distance because this is also <coughs> by virtue of the heat loss and heat production ratio and quenching distance also is <coughs> by virtue of the same uh, heat loss and heat production so you can see for all fuels uh, the, uh, the the relationship is well uh, established at a log log graph so all these hydrocarbons have very high uh, spark ignition energy minimum energy similarly their quenching distance is large whereas for hydrogen as we have already said we have minimum spark ignition energy is very less and also the quenching distance is very small so if we were to take a Davis lamp to a mine which is not having hydrocarbon gases but hydrogen air mixture then these holes have to be designed very very small instead of 10 mm for uh, sorry uh, instead of uh, 8 mm or 6 mm for isobutane you have to make it 0 0.3 millimeter 0 0.4 millimeter for hydrogen so this gives you as an idea of quenching uh, distance this gives an example at uh, room pressure uh, hydrogen has uh, shows a pinching distance of 0.64 millimeter and 2 millimeter for propane this is a table extracted from the reference <coughs> so this is also related to the minimum ignition energy so hydrogen essentially hydrogen burns very close to the wall and therefore it can cause backfire so what is backfire if there is a uh, flame inside the engine and through the wall the wall seat gap the flame can propagate into the inlet and then we can have fire in the inlet so this is this shows a simulation of uh, backfire for example and you backfire in hydrogen fueled SI engine can be characterized using computational fluid dynamics and experiments. Hotspots minimum temperature for backfire occurrence was 950 K. That means inside the engine, if there are some carbon uh, parts or engine parts glowing at 950 K continuously, that can cause a backfire. Uh, in the engine hotspot location does not influence backfire except the timing of its origin backfire propagation is characterized by deflagration that means deflagration is a kind of slow combustion not very fast combustion <coughs> and temperature of the spark plug tip and the exhaust walls below 900 k are required for controlling the backfire in other words, we must have very good cooling around the spark plug and exhaust valves uh, in, inside the engine so that there is a very less chance of backfire. So this shows an uh, example. Uh, suppose I had a, a hot spot here. I have initiated the combustion even before the spark occurred and the flame propagates back into the inlet. So backfire can pass through minute gaps at the wall seats. Why? Because the quenching distance is very small and at high pressure the quenching distance is still reduced. So the wall seat to wall gap even when it is closed uh, can allow some of the flame to propagate so we must be very careful while designing the wall seat gap so the higher the the, uh, the in physics terms the hydrogen is highly diffusive 
and it has got a very low density how we will exploit that the 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 glass break the membrane the gas takes some time to propagate and fill the entire chamber so this is shown for example in the bottom figure here we break the diaphragm there is a gas on the right and left they seem to diffuse into each other and over time there is a uniform mixture created so better diffusivity means better uniformity of mixture in case of uh, gasoline you can see a uh, diffusion is not good so it takes uh, the mixture is not uniformly distributed after we inject inside the engine okay this is the gasoline direct injection in case of hydrogen if you inject it, it diffuses and forms a more uniform mixture essentially hydrogen diffuses faster than gasoline it creates a uniform mixture and complete combustion and improved efficiency are possible also because of better diffusion as well as higher flame speed of hydrogen we can design engines which run at far higher speeds than gasoline higher speed means we can produce more power for the same engine design okay so we can exploit uh, the diffusivity and flame speed property of hydrogen to produce high power from a hydrogen engine compared to a gasoline engine also this uh, if it diffuses fast uh, it can in the open when there is a leak it can die it can get diluted and there is a less danger of fire on the other hand the lower density of hydrogen can be a problem if you want to admit hydrogen in the inlet if you admit the hydrogen in the inlet i the hydrogen occupies a lot of volume around 34% of the volume and you have less volume for the air so as a premixed uh, combustion chamber that means uh, a carbureted or a pork fuel injected engine a hydrogen engine cannot generate as much power as a gasoline engine okay so we have to think of a way uh, to stop this elephant in the room which can reduce the amount of air that we can breathe inside okay so the lower density is a problem and uh, <coughs> Uh, also the stoichiometric air fuel ratio by volume is 24% hydrogen now sorry 24 is to 1 and hydrogen occupies 34% of cylinder volume whereas gasoline occupies only 1.2% in naturally aspirated engine with port fuel injection or carbureted engine we produce relatively low uh, power com compared with a gasoline engine because we can take in only less fuel we need a large fuel tank which occupies a lot of space this is this is external to the engine but this is another disadvantage of lower density of hydrogen so now we will see the about uh, something about design of hydrogen engine so we have uh, uh, gases uh, fuels and liquid fuels we have for example hydrogen in the present context and natural gas hydrogen has a very high calorific value in mass terms but in terms of volume terms it is <coughs> it is uh, it is uh, not very high uh, compared to natural gas and uh, in compared to gasoline it is very low this we have already seen pictorially in the previous slides the, this is because hydrogen occupies a lot of volume for a given mass so with as a the calorific value is calorific value is very good 
on mass basis but on volume basis it is not very good the comparison is very clear okay so we must uh, we must evolve a design which can exploit uh, sorry which can exploit its mass based uh, calorific value and uh, uh, come out of this volume based calorific value okay so air field ratio is very good <coughs> we can uh, 34.3 for example for hydrogen and for gas natural gas and gasoline it's around 15 to 17 okay and if we see the design challenge uh, uh design challenge we have a flame flame temperature at lambda equal to one uh, we have very high nitric oxide whereas the if you look at the octane number which is 120 230 for example we can have high sorry high compression ratio for example 17 and get higher efficiency to come out of this uh, lambda equal to one a problem with high nitric oxide we can use lambda equal to 2.2 because the flammability limits of hydrogen is very wide we can still burn a very lean mixture which is uh, corresponding to lambda equal to 2.2 and uh, we can have uh, low nitric oxide density is low so both engine power is low and fuel tank size is low so we have to contrive a method which can obviate this uh, problem flame speed is very high so engine speed can be high so we can produce more power from the engine and the quenching distance is very low which is a big problem as all the engine components must meet particularly stringent leak tightness requirement and uh, at the same time diffusivity is very high uh, so through the gaps the gases can escape uh, combustible gas can escape this is because the hydrogen molecules are very small and uh, they diffuse very fast so this is a purely conventional idea it is solvable by good mechanical engineering and we can find we have to find specific solution for all this problem so this is an example we we can achieve zero emissions by running an engine hydrogen engine which is running very lean at 2.2 for example sorry one second so we have uh, two types of uh, designs one is port fuel injection uh, we have a problem because nox will be high at lambda equal to one so what we can do is we can use a three-way catalyst by and run the fuel uh, sorry engine at slightly rich uh, lambda lambda equal to 0 0.95 so the efficiency will be slightly poorer but power will be satisfactory okay so port fuel injection is usually with lambda equal to one we can run the engine at lambda equal to 2.2 very lean but we end up with low power higher efficiency and low nitric oxide and we can avoid use of uh, catalyst for the nitric oxide whereas here we have to use a three-way catalyst on the other hand we can turbocharge the engine at lambda equal to 2.2 and still avoid the catalyst for the nitric oxide so we will get satisfactory power higher efficiency and low nitric oxide so the solution for port fuel injection is to turbocharge the engine and run at lambda equal to 2.2 
Ah, run at lambda equal to 0.95 and use a three-way catalyst. If you use the pre-chamber, use a three-way catalyst. If you use the pre-chamber, uh, there are two pre-chambers possible, passive and active, as we are going to see. We can run at lambda equal to 2.2, that is very lean. And fuel can be injected in the port. Of course, we will have lower power, but still very high efficiency and low nitric oxide. And uh, this can be naturally aspirated, it can be turbocharged, and uh, we can avoid the catalyst. The active pre-chamber, which is the best suitable uh, layout for hydrogen engine, will run at lambda equal to 2.2. When the fuel is injected in the pre-chamber, it can be naturally aspirated, it can be turbocharged, it can be, and we can still avoid nitric oxide catalyst for nitric oxide, we can get satisfactory power, higher efficiency, lower nitric oxide, and we can use it for heavy duty application. And ignition system, we don't need much ignition energy. So the regular ignition system of gasoline engines can be used. However, for very lean uh, air fuel ratios, uh, around uh, lambda equal to 4 to 6, uh, the flame velocity reduces con uh, considerably and the use of dual spark plug is system is preferred. Okay, this is an extremely high air fuel ratio around uh, lambda equal to 4 to 6. And in case of gasoline engines, we have a system called waste spark system. In this, in this system, we send, a, we create a spark both at the end of uh, compression stroke as well as the exhaust stroke because the layout becomes very simple. And this, uh, this is not considered a big loss uh, because the layout becomes simpler and and we use a, uh, and this wasted spark system is used. We cannot use this for hydrogen because <coughs> uh, the energy required for hydrogen combustion is so low. And even if you have a very lean mixture during the exhaust stroke, it can catch a fire in the wrong way. Okay. So we cannot have a big waste spark system. And <coughs> Yeah, the spark plug uh, should have a cold rating. This is opposite to what uh, we have in case of uh, gasoline engine. A cold rated plug transfers heat from the plug tip to the cylinder head quicker than a hot rated spark plug. We have hot rated spark plugs also, but they are used for gasoline or uh, natural gas. And chances of spark plug tip igniting the charge should be reduced by cold rating the turbo, uh, spark plug. Hot rated spark plugs are designed to maintain certain amount of heat or in other words high temperature so that the carbon deposits do not accumulate. Since hydrogen does not contain carbon and we don't want <coughs> spurious misfires we avoid hot rated spark plugs and we go for cold rated spark plugs. Importantly, the tip should not be of platinum because platinum is a catalyst and it can cause uncontrolled hydrogen combustion similar to hot rated spark plugs. Okay, so we have two aspects that are very important when selecting the spark plug one is the cold rating. And the second is the tip, and we should not go for a wasted spark system. Okay, and the spark duration can be small. Unburned fuel seeps past the piston rings gaps and enters the crankcase. Since hydrogen has a very low energy ignition limit, 
than gasoline any unburned hydrogen entering the crankcase has a greater chance of igniting so hydrogen should be prevented from accumulating inside the crankcase otherwise there can be an explosion and the crankcase can shatter into pieces so we have to have a special method to rim, uh, evacuate the crankcase and also we should avoid spurious sparks inside the engine that means both the electrical uh, wiring should be properly done with the earthing and also the igni <coughs> um, also in case of any explosion the pressure must be leaked to the atmosphere instantly so the sudden uh, pressure uh, is created in the unlikely event of hydrogen igniting inside the crankcase and this pressure must be relieved by a relief valve on the valve cover and this is normally available for uh, uh, application to high high uh, duty heavy duty diesel and gasoline and cng engines as well so this pressure relief valve is a must for hydrogen engine even if it is applied to light duty also exhaust gases can <coughs> uh, seep by the piston rings both inside the engine as well as in the turbocharger <coughs> um another in interesting aspect is when the gas leaks uh, exhaust gas leaks into the crankcase um, some of the water vapor in the exhaust can condense in the crankcase and and that water can <coughs> get mixed with oil and create trouble so we must have proper ventilation of the crankcase and mixing of water in the crankcase oil reduces its lubrication ability resulting in higher degree of engine wear so this uh, figure shows uh, pressure relief valve uh, in the uh, in the crankcase you can see this is the pressure relief valve in the unlikely event of explosion in the crankcase the pressure is relieved to the atmosphere so now we have understood the various uh, aspects of uh, hydrogen combustion uh, both physics and chemistry and we have anticipated what all steps we should take from our experience regarding cng and gasoline engines uh, so we the <coughs> the spark system uh, the uh, the backfire avoiding backfire and also crankcase ventilation these are all some of the important points which we must remember and apply to our conventional ic engine so there are two types of uh, uh, engines one is uh, port flow injection one second where we burn rich or lean in the main chamber when it is rich we must use a catalyst a three way catalyst when it is lean we can avoid the catalyst we can have a pre chamber engine as we have seen uh, being applied to gasoline uh, to hydrogen as well and uh, hydrogen premixed and gdi is uh, graphically shown here if it is premixed uh, as we are seeing here in the inlet we can produce less power because hydrogen occupies a lot of volume less power than a standard diesel engine so hydrogen occupies a lot of volume if we have liquid hydrogen injected into the port then it occupies less volume 
therefore we can produce uh, slightly more power than uh, more power than a gasoline a corresponding gasoline engine a corresponding gasoline engine and if you have a pre chamber engine we can produce still higher power so this is the uh, comparison of uh, various uh, layouts and most uh, uh, promising are this uh, second and the fourth uh, layouts because liquid hydrogen is a bit difficult to uh, manage so in case a simple port flow uh, port fuel injection is shown here and uh, the engine looks like this uh, in a, an actual car and this is where we inject the fuel hydrogen fuel by using a small uh, uh, computer and <laughs> this is pre-mixed uh, well uh, before the spark uh, can happen so the emissions are very high as we have seen because we are operating very close to stoichiometric combustion and you can see only nitric oxide is the problem carbon di carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon are absent in the exhaust so we have to treat only the uh, nitric oxide in case of a gasoline engine we have all the three uh, namely hydrocarbon the carbon monoxide and the nitric oxide uh, at all air fuel ratios so we have to manage all the three and we have a three way catalyst which can uh, make this hydrocarbon uh, and carbon monoxide reduce nitric oxide at phi equal to 1 at any other phi value we are not able to uh, manage uh, manage the emissions in gasoline but here in case of hydrogen we don't have any hydrocarbon or carbon monoxide that can neutralize nitric oxide so we have a big problem we have to introduce a reducing agent so the idea is to use hydrogen itself as a reducing agent by running the fuel air mixture slightly richer than the stoichiometric so we will use the hydrogen as shown uh, uh, as will be shown now okay so in case of hydrogen engine as uh, we ca we can we can control nitric oxide by leaning the mixture by having a very high compression ratio or very high speed and control the ignition timing but these are relatively less uh effective then controlling the air fuel ratio or use thermal dilution that means exhaust gas recirculation so how do we have to treat the uh after treat the uh, uh, um, pre-mixed uh, uh, combustion here we we see that the nitric oxide increases uh, and decreases as the air fuel ratio changes but when we run it slightly rich we will have some hydrogen available in the exhaust which can be used in the which can be used in the three way catalyst for example here in the three way catalyst the excess hydrogen will drop the nitric oxide or reduce the nitric oxide to nitrogen and water precisely so we have to run it slightly rich that is 0 0.95 the advantage with this is uh, we have hydrogen mixture at <coughs> uh, 
hydrogen mixture that is propagating at very good speed at lambda equal to 1 and uh, we can produce maximum power because it is not lean but the thermal efficiency is not very good at lambda equal to 0 0.95 and uh, <coughs> and uh, with the three way catalyst we can reduce the nitric oxide reasonably and the coefficient of variation of the imep indicated mean effective pressure is lower than 1.5% which is very good compared to the gasoline engine so reducing nitric oxide in cylinder is welcome because we can avoid after treatment how this is done by lean operation so we will compare the heat release rate for example uh, at uh, air excess ratio 1 and 2.2 at a, at ratio 1 that means at lamp uh, at strike when it is stoichiometric the combustion is very fast initially and that time it produces a lot of nitric oxide whereas with lean mixture the heat release is a bit gradual and nitric oxide formation is substantially reduced essentially because the flame temperature is very much less around 300 to 400 degrees less than at lambda equal to 1 and brake thermal efficiency is better for many reasons. One is we are reducing the, we are not having a high pumping loss. That means we are not throttling as much as we do when air excess ratio was one. At the air excess ratio 2.2, the throttling is relatively milder. So the pumping losses are very much reduced. Plus, we have other benefits with uh, lambda 2.2 and the uh, brake thermal efficiency improves. So compared to lambda equal to 1, lambda 2.2 gives us a far better thermal efficiency. And in case of lean operation, uh, <coughs> we, we, we can see the uh, we have seen the heat release is very slow and thermal efficiency is better and the combustion loss does not exceed 0 0.32 percent uh, <coughs> and maximum unburned hydrogen occurred at lambda equal to we don't have any loss of hydrogen this is basically because the combustion uh, flame velocity is very good even at lambda equal to 2.2 we can see on the left hand side the NO value, the red is NO2, red bar, blue bar is NO. So let us concentrate on uh, blue bar. The value is around 4390 ppm when lambda equal to 1. And when lambda equal to 2.2, it is of the order of 14 ppm. So we have a substantial reduction in the NOx produced when lambda is 2.2. So it's uh, for heavy duty application, uh, lean burn is ideal. So we can have a gasoline direct injection system with the pre-chamber. And uh, a lot of research is there on uh, gasoline combustion either with passive pre-chamber spark ignition system which is cheaper to apply and produce but not so efficient and the active pre-chamber system where the fuel is injected in the pre-chamber is more efficient but a bit more complicated and in case of hydrogen we apply only active pre-chamber system and we will just uh, Recap some of the development that is going on in IC engines. In case of uh, gasoline, the idea is to go for increased compression ratio by exploiting Miller cycle, and we can get uh, improvement in efficiency. Of course, we can have uh, cooled EGR, uh, and uh, we can apply 
uh, passive pre-combustion chamber or active pre-combustion chamber, we can have benefits. And homogeneous lean combustion, which is possible, pre-chamber spark plugs enable and complement each other in many different technology packages. So in case of, uh, uh, we'll just see a gasoline or a natural gas engine. Uh, before we go to hydrogen, we need a, <coughs> we need a pre-chamber and a spark plug and uh, we will have a, a, a we will have the fuel injected in the main chamber this is the fuel injector fuel injector fuel is injected in the main chamber and during the compression stroke some of this fuel air mixture enters the pre chamber and it, it is ignited by a spark plug here this is the spark plug and it is here, it is ignited. So this is the fuel injector and this is the spark plug in the pre-chamber. So in the, the GDI in, is in the main chamber and the spark plug is in the pre-chamber. So this is another uh, arrangement of another uh, uh, passive uh, pre-chamber. We have fuel injected here and it goes to the pre-chamber and is ignited by a spark plug. This spark plug is special <coughs> to ignite uh, lean mixtures. Then after it is ignited, a jet of uh, uh, partially combusted fuel air mixture is pushed through these holes into the main chamber and these flamelets form uh, sources of ignition and the entire uh, fuel air mixture which is highly lean in the main chamber is easily ignited by these jets. So this is the technology that is used for burning very low uh, are very high air fuel ratios are very high lambda mixtures uh, using a pre chamber technology. So, essentially, these jets provide more surface area and therefore faster heat release. Uh, yes, and the, in other words, uh, we are indirectly promoting turbulence uh, and hence better fuel economy. So a conventional uh, spark plug in the main chamber would have a heat release so gradual with a pre-chamber spark plug, we would have accelerated the heat release, which otherwise would have been very slow for lambda equal to 2.2. By this uh, passive uh, pre-chamber design, we can have up to 4% improvement in fuel economy, but on an average around 2% improvement in fuel economy. But the main advantage is we can run it very lean and nitric oxide can be extremely low. On the other hand, we have active pre-chamber, uh, GDI the gas, uh, gasoline is directly injected in the pre-chamber. As we see here, this is the uh, injector. It is directly injected uh, in the pre-chamber at around 200 bar. And in the pre-chamber, we have a uh, spark plug which ignites this fuel air mixture. And of course, there will be some residual gases that act as EGR and reduce flame temperature already. So we can do this uh, by studying the CFD of the combustion. <laughs> and the spark initiates initiates the combustion here and spreads and the in increase in pressure due to combustion pushes out fuel air, partially burned fuel air mixture at high velocity into the main chamber where most of the combustion is completed because <coughs> excess air is available in the main chamber.
So this is the spark plug and uh, this is uh, this is the fuel injector and uh, and uh, this is the scheme uh, which uh, is taking place inside the pre-chamber. So active uh, pre-chamber spark plug is uh, enabling very lean operation and in other words we are also able to contain the pumping losses by substantial um, uh, amount and hence improve the efficiency and uh, of course because we are running lean and that is the very purpose of this active pre-chamber design uh, we can reduce the nitric oxide substantially so this graph shows if you have a conventional engine where the spark plug is in the main chamber, the indicated fuel consumption curve is something like this, very high, but we are not able to reduce it further uh, by going beyond a ratio of 1.4. Even 1.4 will be very difficult. If you have an active pre-chamber, we can go up to 2.2 or 2.3. We can reduce the fuel consumption by another 5%. At the same time, reduce the nitric oxide substantially to a very low level. Actually, this is a logarithmic graph. From 10, we are dropping down to 0.02, for example. Okay. So this is a log logarithmic scale, and this is a linear scale. ISFC is shown in linear scale, IS NOx is shown in logarithmic graph. So up to 10% improvement in fuel economy is possible and especially in the operating region. <coughs> so this enables us to uh, uh, go, go to the goal of around 75 gram per kilo uh, kilometer corporate average. We'll see this. Uh, uh, video. One minute. Never before has it been so important to cut fuel consumption and pollutant emissions of vehicle powertrains. To achieve the future fleet target of less than 75 grams of CO2 per kilometer, the efficiency of combustion engines must therefore be significantly enhanced. Pre-chamber ignition is a technology that helps to make combustion more efficient. It has been used for many decades in stationary large board gas engines. The pre-chamber is currently also used in Formula One racing for high performance levels in highly dynamic operation. How can these two worlds be brought together? IAV has selected a new approach to the pre-chamber and developed solutions that make future use in passenger cars highly promising. Usually when we're thinking about pre-chamber spark plug, just to spark plug with the happening. We want to go a different way. We want to, to integrate the pre-chamber spark plug into the entire engine. So it means on the one hand, integration into the combustion process, and on the other hand, the integration of the pre-chamber into the cylinder head itself. The principle is simple. After the fuel mixture has been ignited in the pre-chamber, flare jets pass into the main combustion chamber. Here, they act as multiple space-filling ignition points for constantly stable, rapid burning of the mixture, providing major advantages in terms of both knock and consumption in stoichiometric operation. When we think about building a switch in the market to a serious car, we have to focus several products. On the one hand, we have very high loads and very low loads. And on the other hand, we have also very high and very low temperatures. In addition to that, we also have to make sure to enable hazardous heating. And we at IV, we found some solutions to exactly these problems. We see pre-chamber ignition as an evolutionary technology. On the one hand, we are working on a passive solution where the mixture only gets to the pre-chamber via the main combustion chamber. 
This is a low cost variant that is easy to implement and achieves 2 to 3% fuel reduction in our tests. On the other hand, we are also developing an active version with an additional special air fuel low pressure injection system, achieving 7 to 8% fuel savings. And uh, Minister of UK, Johnson. And that uses Male. Like bulldozer, large cranes, etc. So they are very powerful, compact, and lightweight systems. You will see a <coughs> view of this Male system. We have a fuel injector and a spark plug in the same chamber. So it is essentially an active pre-chamber system, and the pre-chamber has got a lot of holes through which this partially burned hydrogen air mixture. Uh, comes out and forms multiple uh, flamelets or ignition sources for burning very well in the main chamber, ultimately producing very low nitric oxide at very high efficiency. In fact, we of uh, the So essentially, the active pre-chamber system enables us to burn ultra-lean uh, air fuel mixtures, lambda about 2. And uh, we have 10% improvement in fuel efficiency compared to stoichiometric combustion, and up to 95% reduction in nitric oxide, and <coughs> substantial knock resistance. So we have these references, those who are uh, interested about knowing more can go through these references, uh, which are listed, uh, the links are listed on the left. And also some of these references, which you can get from the library or the internet, uh, uh, some are for payment, uh, you can download uh, and then studies the hydrogen uh, combustion and the hydrogen engine for example and uh, we have another video here this is to just show the in this video you'll learn how a hydrogen car works types of hydrogen powered engines pros and cons of hydrogen car does it have any future and whether you should buy it or not timestamps below if you want to skip any of the sections. Hydrogen-powered engines go back a lot further than you might think. 
More than two centuries ago, the French inventor, Francois Isaac de Rivaz, developed a primitive engine that was powered by hydrogen and oxygen and ignited by an electric spark. Hydrogen vehicles can be powered in two different ways. One with a fuel cell system and another with internal combustion engine. Let's find out how a hydrogen-powered car run with fuel cells. So a hydrogen-powered car is powered with an electric motor. It consists of a fuel cell, a device that takes chemical energy in the form of hydrogen and turns it into electricity that can power an electric motor, just like a battery. First, hydrogen stored in a tank that is thick-walled and crash-tested and usually under the rear seat is mixed with air and pumped into the fuel cell. Inside the cell, a chemical reaction extracts electrons from the hydrogen. The leftover hydrogen protons move across the cell and combine with oxygen from the air to produce water. Meanwhile, the electrons create electricity, which charges a small storage battery used to power an electric drivetrain, just like in an electric vehicle. This is why the vehicles are called fuel cell electric vehicles, as compared to the battery electric vehicles, which are seen increasingly on our roads already. The biggest difference between fuel cell and battery EVs, like the Tesla car, is the source of electricity. Electric cars run on batteries charged electrically, even from solar panels. But hydrogen-powered cars produce their own electricity. They have their little power plant on board that's the fuel cell. And now, let's find out how a hydrogen car run with an internal combustion engine. These types of vehicles are different from hydrogen fuel cell vehicles due to the combustion process. The hydrogen IC engine is a modified version of the conventional gasoline powered engine. In this way, the combustion process is similar to that of the other high temperature combustion fuels such as gasoline, diesel, or natural gas. Hydrogen engines are actually similar to gas-powered motors in a lot of ways. They both use a four-stroke design for intake, compression, ignition, and exhaust, and both make the same sorts of sound. The main difference is in the exhaust system. The absence of carbon means that no CO is produced, eliminating the main greenhouse gas emissions of a conventional petroleum engine. Instead of toxic nitrogen gases, hydrogen motors produce water as the main byproduct of their combustion cycle. Because of the heat also produced by the engine, there are still some harmful emissions, but not nearly as much as a normal gas engine produces. Therefore, hydrogen engines are not considered zero emissions. The downside is that hydrogen is difficult to handle. Due to the very small molecular size of the hydrogen atom, hydrogen is able to leak through many solids. The remaining hydrogen gas mixed with air is potentially explosive. Hydrogen has so far struggled to deliver on its initial promise as an alternative road transport fuel, but it is a topic that refuses to go away. There is still great potential in its use in hydrogen fuel cells to generate emissions-free electricity. There are hydrogen cars on UK roads, and while you might be hard-pressed to find one right now, manufacturers like Toyota, Honda, and Hyundai have already produced their hydrogen models. So... Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah.
it is very light so it will uh, uh, when it is stratifying it will go to a higher uh, level uh, rather than stay at the at lower level and cause trouble uh, similar to natural gas natural gas also is light so we can let it out so there is less danger uh, as far as hydrogen in the atmosphere is concerned but hydrogen in enclosed atmosphere is a bit difficult uh, because uh, if you, it's uh, air fuel uh, flammability limits are very wide uh, we have seen we can burn up to ratio lambda of 3 uh, or 4 so in an enclosed atmosphere it is always difficult so it is uh, we have to avoid any mild spark also if two steel plates uh, clash with each other uh, even what we, we with uh, anode uh, we cannot see with the anode eye but there will be sparks produced and they can create trouble so we must have good wiring system first of all and we must have white spa, uh, unwanted sparks in any of the engine or car area so these are some of the precautions and uh, uh, we must uh, take into account and this is not only for ic engine uh, running on hydrogen it is also for uh, fuel cell best vehicle so we, there must be a special uh, care taken uh, i i don't know very much about it but we must take care uh, to avoid uh, combustible air fuel mixture in that machine so it's almost a pro it's a problem in, for enclosed uh, sorry in, in closed conditions uh, we can create a combustible mixture yeah there, there is a risk we must take care of it. thank you sir ha ah, yes sir thank you sir. yes sir yes. sir my voice is audible right right sir yeah audible yeah okay uh, sir uh, lakshmi sir thank you very much for the nice presentation sir sir uh, myself working in srm university i was uh, working in uh, gda engine Uh, so sir actually now as a part of my research i am planning to uh, inject hydrogen like so yeah. i will be injecting gasoline uh, in cylinder uh, hydrogen will be inducted so i am preparing the experimental setup for that so you 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 have any mention for that sir any, any yeah that is what we said uh, port fuel injection uh, without turbocharging produces very low power basically at uh, stoichiometric mixing uh, at stoichiometric uh, conditions it is 34% occupied by the uh, fuel that is namely hydrogen so you don't you find you have a drop in power drop in power unless we turbocharge a pfi a hydrogen engine Uh, produces very less power compared to a gasoline engine or even a cng engine and uh, in fact my uh, our experience with cng engine is to go for turbocharging uh, to produce enough power because even cng occupies substantial volume in the uh, cylinder so okay. uh, ideally we should turbocharge but we must be all the more careful when we turbocharge because the pressure above the piston is relatively higher so the blow by past the ring gap will be higher so we must take extra care uh, to uh, ventilate the crankcase so the crankcase must be ventilated somewhat positively somewhat okay. positively with the Uh, precautions taken for pressure relief also okay in the un unlikely event of explosion the engine is not damaged only the pressure is released to the atmosphere and this is not very uncommon uh, marine diesel engines must uh, as per the underwriters have uh, pressure relief valve 
and the cng engines used in trucks and buses for example uh, not invariably but uh, almost have this pressure relief valves so these are available in the market uh, as uh, uh, an item and we can buy and fit it at the crankcase and set the pressure okay uh, yeah. sir even if i increase my flow rate hydrogen flow rate uh, do you think uh, no, there will be no, a no, net no, drop no. And... yeah yeah it will be okay. still okay. you can you know, the, the law of volumes by uh, Charles La. I think, sir, you can go to that slide, sir. Uh, that slide, I think you mentioned uh, that will be more uh, about the liquid hydrogen the PF. That uh, liquid gasoline. Ah, uh, yes, liquid yes. Liquid hydrogen is a bit of a uh, pie in the sky. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, just a second. the lower density 34% of it is occupied okay. whereas in case of gasoline liquid gasoline uh, very less volume will be occupied and you know it's having a very high density gasoline is uh, 700 kg per meter cubed hydrogen is very very low okay. far less than one Okay. Okay. So, so right, is this Charles Love volumes? I mean, uh, uh, nothing, uh, nothing extraordinary. But uh, we must invoke uh, this lower density into our design because we should not be stunned by lack of uh, power. Okay. Okay. Got it. Sir. Yes. So, but uh, sir, but uh, apart from power, but I'll be able to achieve lean limits, right, sir? Like, uh -huh. uh, can I able to achieve lean limits? Lean limits, yes, up to two point two uh, is very normal, and okay. uh, there is nothing. You can go up to three also uh, okay. with some pro problem. Lambda equal to three is not uh, uh, very difficult, but lambda two point two is what I'm. Uh, hearing from the uh, engineers who are applying hydrogen. Okay, so I'll I'll be like I'll be uh, leaning down the gasoline and I'll be increasing the hydrogen, but thereby I can achieve the uh, higher lean limits. That's what you mean, right, sir? I I am not exactly with you, but hydrogen oh. to air ratio, you know, okay. is, uh, sorry, air to hydrogen is thirty four is to one. For stoichiometric combustion, okay. Yes, yes, sir. And you can go up to two times thirty-four. That means sixty-eight air to one hydrogen is possible without much problem. Okay. That is what we mean to say that thirty-four. Uh, I think I have shown somewhere this uh, air field ratio. Uh, yes, uh, here, here. Yep. This is the air field stoichiometric air field ratio. Thirty-four is to one by mass. Okay. okay, so we can, uh, if you say lambda equal to two, it means you can go for 68 air to one hydrogen. hydrogen. Okay. But in case of, if you work out by volume, you can go for 4.8 air to one of hydrogen and still uh, ignite the air fuel mixture okay. successfully. Okay, okay sir. Okay. Then. Thank you, sir. Thank you very uh, much. No problem. No problem. Uh, sir, one more point I'll add, sir. Uh, thank you very much for stating about the cold rated spark plug, sir. Uh, yeah. That uh, that I'll definitely yeah. look into my yeah. uh, experimental setup. Because uh, yeah. generally, all uh, gasoline comes with the hot rated. Uh, yes. Spark plug. Gasoline, uh, because we don't want carbon buildup, so yes. that is uh, there, and also sometimes for natural gas we have this uh, hot hot uh, spark okay. as recommended okay. by bosch for example okay. you can go to bosch uh, site and then do that but one more thing this hydrogen uh, whenever you are burning very lean you cannot have single 
uh, earth electrode. You might have to have four earth 